President Joe Biden unveiled his budget proposal, a $6.8 trillion plan that would raise taxes on the wealthiest Americans and cut the deficit by $3 trillion over the next decade. While Republicans have immediately panned the president's plan, they have not yet unveiled their own budget proposal. And there is a reason for that. Republicans know that theirs won't be popular. President Biden knows that, too, which is why he's calling on Republican Speaker Kevin McCarthy to release his plan publicly. The fact is that the Speaker of the House has been, he's a very conservative guy, and he has even more conservative group with him. But he and I met early on, and he said, what are we going to do about the budget? And I said, oh, let's make a deal. Let's meet. I'm, I said, I'm going to introduce my budget on the 9th of March. You introduce yours, and we'll sit down, and we'll go line by line, and we'll go through it. I'm ready to meet with the Speaker anytime, tomorrow, if he has his budget. Lay it down. Tell me what you want to do. I'll show you what I want to do. Joining me now is White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre. It's good to have you on. Um, hey, Chris. Good it, to it, see you. It's good to see you, too. So I guess the question is, I, the argument, so, so far as I, I can adduce it from Kevin McCarthy, is these should be essentially secret behind closed doors negotiations, and it would poison the well for them to be public in any way about what budget they want. What do you think of that? Well, that's not how it should work. Let's be let's see some transparency. Let's see from House Republicans what is it that they value? What is it that they see as fiscally responsible to move forward to for the American people? I mean, Chris, you've heard them. We've heard them for many years now. They want to cut Medicare. They want to cut Social Security. These are things that they have voted on. And that's not something that the president believes in. He has said very clearly over and over again, and you heard him at the State of the Union, where he laid it out for Republicans that were sitting in front of him. And he said he's going to fight for Medicare and Social Security. And you saw what they put forward, uh, the Freedom House Caucus, the GOP Freedom House Caucus. That's what they put forward is basically what they said they value, which is selling out the middle class to corporations and the wealthy. That's what they put out today. That is the plan that they feel that they need to move forward with, which is actually kind of it's it's a bit insane. Right. When you think you're, they're going to do the biggest cuts to Medicare and that we've seen in decades, they want to uh, they want to basically give a gut punch to everyday Americans by not doing anything to lower the deficit. If anything, it adds to the deficit, giving tax tax breaks for the wealthy. It's a tax base for, for special interest, rich special interest. I mean, that's what they so far seems to be saying that they want to do. So again, the president's calling on McCarthy to p come forth with his budget, and then we'll see what we can do. We'll go line by line and see what they believe is their value statement to the American people. Um, the, the, the Scott Perry House Freedom Caucus uh, proposal that you noted today, which I should say Rick Scott endorsed, which was interesting given all the back and forth with Rick Scott in particular at the State of the Union, um, about $400 billion in student debt relief would be gone, uh, rescind unspent COVID funds, cut the climate change funding that was in the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, of course, the first significant climate change funding of its time, capping discretionary spending at fiscal 2022 levels for a decade, which sounds sort of anodyne, but is like $2 trillion in domestic policy yeah. uh, and domestic pr program cuts. Do you, I mean, do you think that's, is, is that what you, the White House views as the alternative here or the thing that's going to be, are, you know, compromised against? Well, look, that's something for Speaker McCarthy to decide, right? As you said, they put a plan together. Yeah. They basically, that's, we, you know, it seems to be their value statement to the American people. And honestly, it would be funny if it wasn't so scary, Chris, if it wasn't so dangerous what they're saying that they want to do. You think about the Inflation Reduction Act. There's so many there that, there's so many things that you just list out. You think about the Inflation Reduction Act. That is supposed to actually, uh, it's supposed to help lower the deficit by over $200 billion. So it is a smart plan that the president put forward that lowers costs for the American people, that helps Medicare negotiate so that we can actually, again, lower costs for the American people, our seniors, if you think about it, how important that is, energy security, all of the things that really truly deal with what Americans need right now when you think about lowering costs while we're dealing with inflation as we see inflation moderating over the last seven months. I mean, that's just one piece of, of, of item that I'm talking about. There's a whole list of other things that they put forward that actually hurts Americans. Again, it is a gut punch to Americans and lifting up 
it, lifting up the wealthy and the corporation. I mean, but that's what we're seeing so far. It's up to the speaker to let us know, hey, is this it? Is this what you're saying? Is the value statement that you want to give to the American people? It's for Speaker, speaker McCarthy to decide. I want to ask you, just since I have you here, about something we've covered earlier this week. There was reports the White House was considering, or Department of Homeland Security was considering, reintroducing the practice of family detention, something that was tried and that abandoned under Barack Obama in 2014-2015. That was uh, harshly criticized by then-presidential uh, candidate Joe Biden, uh, has been roundly criticized by human rights lawyers, medical uh, officials who have to deal with this as inhumane, as causing damage to children who are, uh, you know, held uh, with, with their families. Is it true that that's being considered? So what I want to be very clear here, and I've answered this question, as you know, Chris, many times in the briefing room, and we as an administration has as well. Look, there, we are not going to certainly comment on uh, com rumors or conversations that are that are out there that people are reporting on. Those are rumors. What we are going to promise is that we're going to do this. We're going to move forward with a with a uh, with this kind of system, this immigration system that has been gutted, really, truly gutted by the last administration. We're going to move forward and do it in a humane way. We're going to do it in a safe way, uh, and we're going to do it in the way that moves us forward. And so, what we have been seeing, what we've been dealing with, again, is trying to fix the damage that the last administration. Do, did what we have done is we've ex we've opened the path uh, to uh, we've opened the path to, to make sure that people have a way to um, to get you know to come through and do it in a legal pathway. That's why we extended the parolee program that has been very successful with Nicaragua, with Cuba, with Haiti, uh, and with Venezuela. And those are the things that the president wants to move forward with. How do we do this in a safe way, in an orderly way, in a humane way? And that's the tools that the president's going to use. But again, when it comes to uh, rumored conversation, I, I just can't comment on that. Uh, it, it is not something that I can well, confirm, but I can tell you what we have been doing since the first well, the president walked into the administration. Just la just to follow up on that, I mean, I, I think if yeah. I said, are you going to do child separation again, you'd say, no, we're not going to do child separation, right? I mean, so it just seems like you could say, like, we're not going to do family detention, but you're not saying that, which is, you know, fine far as it goes, but I, I just want to be clear. But I think what you're asking me, Chris, is to speak to it's to speak to rumors that are out there, right? And that's not something that we're going to speak to any right. rumored conversation. What we're going to do is, as you know, Title 42 is going to be ending uh, uh, up to, by uh, in May at some point. And so, what we're trying to do is find ways to deal with uh, to deal with what occurs once we get to that date. Look, here's the thing. One of the things that we were able to do and that we have been working on is making sure that we try to reunite families. And we have done that under under a task force that the mm -hmm. president has put forth very early on in his administration, right? Making sure that we fix, again, yep. the problem that was caused in the last administration. We're still working on that. And that is so critical. And that is so important. When the president walked into this administration, he actually did something that was incredibly important, which is put forth a comprehensive immigration reform to deal with this real issue. But we haven't seen any action from Republicans in Congress. And so what the president has done, he's put forth uh, pathways to, to uh, pathways to uh, to uh, to come in here and uh, to come into this country in a legal way, which yep. we've seen it working, which is really important. And again, doing it in a humane way. I just want to be careful. Department of Homeland Security is having is, is trying to figure out how do we move forward past Title 42. I'm going to let them have that okay. conversation. I'm just not going to lean into rumors. The moment that I talk about rumors or conversations that are out there, then it opens up. A okay. whole other conversation. So just want to be mindful of that. All right. Corinne Jean Pierre, I appreciate you making time for us. Thank tonight. you. Thank you very Absolutely. much. Absolutely. My pleasure. Bye bye.